it is important in the area of motivating yourself it's important to know why you're doing it because that mind will say why bother why go through all this this is too hard no throw in the towel it's not worth it has it ever said that to you before here's how you can handle that here's how you override that write down five reasons why you deserve it why do you deserve what you want why you why do you deserve it what meaning and value will it bring to your life what's so different about you that you deserve your goal or this goal and when you write down those five reasons when you have some down moments and you're going to have them when that conversation starts talking to you and it's going to talk to you what you will do is you can pull that out and read it and it will build you up it will be your rod and your staff to comfort you through some challenging moments because you're going to have some life will knock you between the eyes it will catch you on the blind side come out of nowhere stuff you can't anticipate that will knock the wind out of you you want to give up that's why it's important for you to work on yourself, listening to tapes, building yourself up, talking to yourself with power, feeling, and conviction, building yourself up day in and day out because it's coming. Life will send you some curves you cannot anticipate. The next thing is that whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of, of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you could be. That you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. The other thing that's the key to self-motivation is recognize the fact that you're going to get into some slumps. Recognize the fact that you're going to encounter a great deal of failure in life. It goes with the territory. But in the face of that, you want to be relentless. When you want something, you don't expect everybody to say, oh, come on in, we've been, oh, you want this? Oh, great, we want to give this to you. You're such a nice person. You're doing it for your family, aren't you? Great. No, no, life isn't like that. No, many doors will be closed in your face. Many loans that you will want. And they'll say, no, you don't have enough collateral. You don't have enough credit. And most people will give up. But you've got to decide that I'm going to be fearless. I refuse to be denied and I'm going to go all out. I'm going to be relentless. I don't care how many no's I encounter. I like something Isaiah Thomas said when he's getting ready for a basketball game. He said, I'm going to either shoot us in or shoot us out, but I'm not going to not do anything. And that's the way to go. You can't make a basket unless you shoot the ball. You can't hit a home run unless you take a swing at it. Most people won't even take a swing. Well, I probably won't make it anyhow. That's the conversation within. They probably won't give it to me anyhow. If you want something, you've got to be relentless. You've got to decide, I deserve this and I'm going to have it. And you go all out to get it. That drives you. The next thing is that when you want something out of life you've got to be willing to go into action don't wait around for things to be just right don't wait for things to be perfect don't wait for the ideal situation it will never be ideal there will always be a reason well as soon as the children grow up as soon as i pay my bills as soon as i get my divorce all kinds as soon as i get enough money together do what you can where you are with what you have and never be satisfied a lot of people never take a chance in life they don't want to take any chances they want the situation to be ideal see that's not walking by faith that's walking by sight if i can see it i'll do it no 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 that's a lot of people saying if i can see it i'll believe it no 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 if you believe it you can see it
And don't be disturbed because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. That's part of being unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you're like Paul who said, you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. That's part of being unreasonable. Most people won't do that. Most people say, call me when you get it together. <laughs> then I'll support you. <laughs> the other thing is that one of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision Part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. Say, I can't afford to give anything. You can't afford not to give. Give your time. Give your talent. There's nothing just to go over there and lick envelopes. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going over there. It's part of my tithing in the universe. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop, when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You'll go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you. When you go in, they'll say, hey, that's somebody important. I want to know who you are. I just want to be near you. That energy that you have, that consciousness that you will embody will affect everybody around you. The next thing is, is that you want to create a home court advantage for yourself. You've got to be aware of who you have around you. So you want to be selective. Have friends that will enable you to grow. I have friends that help me to grow spiritually. These are my spiritual friends. I talk spiritual stuff with them. I have some other friends who are just intellectual friends. They make me grow intellectually. They make me stretch. I have some professional friends. I'm a member of the National Speakers Association. I get together with other speakers and we learn from each other and we grow from each other. I have other friends who are just social friends. All we do is just socialize together. We'll look at a basketball game together or go out dancing, but that's all we can do. We don't talk anything serious, nothing spiritual, nothing intellectual. That's not that kind of relationship. Nothing heavy up in here. Have other friends, we walk together. That's all we can do, walk together. Talk about we're going to lose weight one day by and by for good, all right? That's all we do. Nothing else. So, according to the relationships that you develop, we grow from people and projects. And the relationships that you develop can enhance and can enrich your life, or they can drain you. I know many talented people who had a great deal of potential, but because they didn't surround themselves with other people that will inspire them to transcend themselves, they never realize their greatness and they will end up going to their grave with all their good stuff still in them. So you want to look at your relationships, the people that you're involved with, the people that you communicate with all, most often, and you want to ask yourself the question, what am I becoming because of this relationship? Does it inspire me? Am I motivated? Am I encouraged? Am I driven to develop myself? Am I seeking my own greatness? What kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I becoming more cynical and negative about life? Ask yourself that. The next thing is, you've got to say yes to your life. You've got to say yes. Yes to my dreams. Yes to me. Yes, I can make it. Yes, I can. Doesn't matter how many failures I've made. Doesn't matter how many mistakes I've endured. Doesn't matter about my defeats. Doesn't matter about what I've done. Yes, yes. 
I don't care about the fact I'm in a hole now. Doesn't matter about where I am. Yes, the last chapter to my life has not been written yet. If you judge me now, you'll judge me prematurely.